Hey, everybody, we are here. Welcome, one and all, to the uh, show um, on Traveling with Bruce, uh, where we try to talk about the stock markets in plain English. It is, um, it's Friday, July the 1st, uh, 2022, and that means this is the first day of the third quarter of markets in plain English. Um, it is we've got, um, we, just re we just came through the worst first two quarters back-to-back for the stock market performance in 42 years. Um, unbelievable. Um, we're getting ready now for the first day of the third quarter to see what the second half of the year will bring us. We've got uh, a negative market today, not incredibly negative, just it's down. We're down 129 on the Dow, uh, 14 on S&P, and we seem to be down 59 on uh, NASDAQ. Less than half a percentage point of negativity. Nothing too serious. We can certainly overcome it if the market wanted to do so. We'll wait and see if that happens. Um, oil up 293 a barrel, 294. That, that's the bad news. Um, we were down about $4 a barrel yesterday. Now we're up 294. We'll see if this lasts for the rest of the day here. Um, uh, crude oil now up 301 at 108.77. So that's, that's what we've got there. Uh, why are the markets off even more? today what what's going on here um we're noticing a couple of things today that are really uh driving the uh, the analysts uh, crazy um these guys and girls try to figure out what this market's up to i am showing for example um on the interest rate front um the 10-year note the united states 10-year bond is now at 2.92 percent this is amazing, actually. We we were at three weeks ago, 3.5%, like 3.499% as the latest interest rate bump went through. We all know we're going to get another interest rate bump in July. It's supposed to be three quarters of a point um, to fight inflation, as it were. And we're now noticing that the U.S. rate has dropped about a half a percentage point. Point when you look at the 10-year treasury. The German 10-year note is at 129. It was 1.8 uh, just three weeks ago. Italy, 3.15. It was 4.25. It's come off more than a percent. Interest rates are plummeting on the treasuries right now, and this is a sign of weakness uh, this is a sign of of uh, money not being borrowed uh not being wanted to be borrowed uh, very interesting stuff here euro 104.2 this sucker is off dramatically uh from 105 and a half a couple days ago the pound 1.2017 we're about to go under 120 on the british pound and uh, that is again another sign of weakness I tell you, uh, a lot of cash um, um, that wants to park itself in a safe place for a while is just heading to the U.S. Treasury. It, it's just buying up the U.S. Treasuries, buying the German Treasuries, and um, the uh, the uh, fact is that more money is going into the um, U.S. Treasury market than the than the uh, Euro Treasury market or the German Treasury market, and this is why the U.S. dollar is rising against everybody else. Um, oil, unfortunately for those countries out there whose currencies are falling against the U.S. dollar, oil up three bucks a barrel makes it worse, because not only is it up three bucks a barrel, it's up three U.S. dollars a barrel, and if your currency is dropping half a percentage point that means oil prices are up another half a percentage point just on the currency fluctuation today and the three dollar move which is a 2.8 percent move in oil there are countries out there hurting badly with regards to the cost of energy into their systems which again brings me back to the question that i have uh uncle bruce has questions as he speaks in the third person uncle bruce wants to know why would oil be going up in price if there's an economic slowdown going on? If the China market, if the China economy is not growing at the pace that they want it to, if Japan's economy is slowing down, South Korea is slowing down, Indonesia is slowing down, South America not doing too well, North America definitely not doing too well, Europe slowing down. If we're all slowing down 
and we're not uh, running at full factory capacity, why is oil at 108.75? Kind of like, you know, a few good men. Uh, if Santiago was not to be touched, why did he have to be removed from the island? I mean, you said he wasn't in, he was in grave danger. Why would he be in grave danger if you said he was not to be touched? Why is oil up 307 if we need less of it? Uh, the, the thinking is, and, and the analysts are, are almost uniform in saying, we don't think the planet uh, Earth is going to use as much oil next year as last year, or, or even what we're using now. We're going to use less of it. What's the big deal? It can't possibly be supply chain issues on oil. Uh, this price of this commodity is so good at 108 right now, everybody makes money. Uh, that, that's, that's the bottom line at 108. Everybody makes money playing with oil, whether you drill for it, whether you, you purify it, whether you refine it, whether you move raw crude through pipelines. Pipeline companies are making money. Uh, ship, ships are making money that transport oil in giant ocean tankers. Rail companies make money moving it. Distributors are making money, taking it from a refinery to your local gas station. Your gas station is making money. Everybody is making money on oil and gas. Why would there be a shortage? Everyone would focus on the one area of the economy where you can make a good buck. You forget about doing this and doing that. You zero in on making money where you can make money. And that is the energy business. Don't understand it. I don't understand how with all this crude available, all this oil and gas available, not a single story on the media in the United States or in Canada or even in Europe, where there are one hour long lineups of people trying to get gas for their cars. Nothing like that anywhere in the Western world. Nothing. There's no shortage. We're, we're drowning in this stuff. What's it trading at 108? It's ridiculous. It's an anomaly. Um, the markets are off. Yep, because oil is high. Uh, the fear of higher um, inflation and higher interest rates. But Inflation will cool off if there's a lack of demand for goods. And if inflation cools off, then the heat underneath and interest rates will cool off as well. All of a sudden, you've got the right ingredients for an expanding economy for a better performing stock market. I, I just sit here and shake my head going, this market is oversold. It is due for a recovery. Maybe half the losses we're overdone. Now, does that mean every single stock goes up? No, it does not mean that at all. There will be winners in the second half and continued laggards in the second half because markets don't go up in a uniform way or go down in a uniform way. There's always inequities and anomalies all over the place. Read today a headline from Micron. Micron is a chip maker they're saying that the chip business has really backed off. They're saying that uh, the chip boom is over because they say they're, they're in a downturn. And I'm sitting here going, wait a minute, like I'm not a, I'm not like a, you know, a Nobel, Nobel Prize winning genius or anything, but wasn't it just a few months ago, like six months ago, that Ford had thousands and thousands of F-150 pickup trucks? sitting near their factories, I think in Kansas and elsewhere, that were like 90% finished and they were waiting for computer chips to be installed in those modules that they put in these cars so that that would operate the climate system and it would correct the timing on the engine and align the transmission and fuel usage and revs and all the stuff that cars are supposed to do, how smart they are. Weren't, weren't we hearing nothing but complaints from Tesla and Ford and General Motors and Audi and Mercedes? All the car companies of the world were saying our production numbers are off because of supply chain issues, which is directly tied to the computer chip problem. We can't get the chips. We can't get the computer chips in here to finish our products. And we were hearing the same thing about uh, dishwasher makers fridge uh, manufacturers, stoves, microwaves. I mean, you know, our kitchen appliances are a lot smarter now than they were 40 years ago. 
lots of brains in there, lots of uh, technology in there. Uh, where did all that? Where did all that go? Um, I can't understand that. Uh, you telling me in the last what month people have stopped ordering refrigerators for home renovation products projects? I don't, I don't think so. Um, are your car dealerships in your hometown over? flowing with vehicles all of a sudden does every single dealer where you live with gm ford and everybody else are, are their parking lots filled with cars I, I don't think so are rv dealerships overflowing with trailers and and fifth wheels and class c's and class a motorhomes i don't think so i think the shortage is all over the place i don't understand what this micron guy is talking about i don't get it um Telephone usage is just as crazy as it always has been. It's going to get crazier, and the chips inside these are going to get more sophisticated, faster, more complex. I don't know where that – there's not a slowdown happening there. I don't understand where this computer chip thingy is coming from, and why is it that in a in a 30- to 60-day window, it's now the reverse? That, that what, we got too many chips now? We got, we got computer manufacturers with uh, chip makers that can't sell their chips all of a sudden i don't think so as far as i recall uh i believe that uh, i had heard that uh, computer chip manufacturers were like two years behind and they had orders that they were trying to catch up on and they were way behind on those orders i still think they're delivering though on those orders i really do i think there's a lot of material a lot of components out there waiting for chips to be installed in them so they can be moved on down the factory line to eventually the end consumer I kind of wonder about all that i i i i wonder how why do these what do these uh, prognostications go from on off on off I, you never heard of idle before a slowdown a ramp up I, it's news to me it's a new world i guess we're down 117 on the dow make it 112 coming on a little bit here Still down 14 on S&P, down 58 on NASDAQ. The three indexes are down 0.37 for the Dow, 0.38 for S&P, and down 0.49 for NASDAQ. That, those are the three indexes right there. Oil down 302, or up 302 as I speak to you. And there you have it. That's our that's our early indication of what's, what's going on here. Um, I really wonder just where our be going really if rates are going to continue to drop and uh, they sure look like a 292 on the u.s treasury 128 on germans uh, rate 3.1 on italy spain 2.3 uk 2.1 we get low rates like this and higher currency numbers uh, for the american dollar um uh, i tell you that the, the, this you know this 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 continues you folks who are option writers um you got you're in the right place at the right time you're doing the right thing in the right market um it's absolutely working for you you will continue to uh score returns against the lackluster market uh you will continue to write options that are either at the money or just out of the money some of you write in the money options which is all right um and i think you're going to have just a wonderful year i bet you that a lot of you out there who watch this guy talk and talk and talk um i bet you you have friends relatives and co-workers people you know that have been receiving their monthly uh, updates and statements probably by email nowadays in the old days you used to get envelopes in the mail but i bet you you know or are aware of people who are getting their statements and it's telling them how their iras are doing in their 401ks their investment accounts these folks don't write options. They leave their money in the hands of professional administrators, money administrators. You got to wonder, how many friends do you folks know out there who are lamenting the fact that their numbers are way off already this year? That in the first six months of this year, their plans have just gone down, down, down. Their accounts are worth way less money. And some of you, I would bet you, some of you are watching me here going, uh, well, yeah, my count is down a little bit, Bruce. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, stocks are lower. Uh, I mean, even Apple is down, you know, from where it was already this year. But I'm not off like others are off. I'm nowhere near that. I've got money coming in from these options I keep writing. I've got this income source coming in that is that is offsetting 
the capital losses that market is uh, you know dishing out doling out to those out there who are just sitting on ETFs and mutual funds and <coughs> index funds and are just getting hammered uh, yeah, I would think so. And I think that uh, with inflation, it makes it worse uh, because, of course, your dollar has less purchasing power and you have fewer of them, or those folks do. But I would bet you that a bunch of you guys um, are generating income on your accounts and you're going, yeah, the market's down, but so what? And if the market stays here for three months, just stays flat, I'll be bringing in all kinds of money. If the market wants to go up 5% for the rest of the year or 10% or 15% slight gain for the rest of the year, I'll just go with the flow. I'll just write higher priced contracts and keep making money off of them. Thank you very much. Um, I think you guys, a lot of you guys are figuring out that this this so-called uh, bear market is not a big deal to you. And uh, welcome to the option writing business. Uh, what can I say? I am not hearing used car lot advertisements. Yeah, you notice that, huh? Um, you drive by your local RV dealers in town. And there's just not a lot of trailers in there. Not a lot of brand new spanky RVs ready to go. They're still back ordered. They're, they're waiting for them to come out. I'm, I'm wondering what was going on. Um, what else is going on? Uh, what else is uh, what else is happening? Good morning, Bagel family from Alberto. Let's get this party started. I agree. Uh, let's get going. Um, what can I say? Thank you, everybody, by the way, for these thumbs ups. You guys are throwing thumbs ups at me already. 41 here, 40 there, 36 here. Thank you. I appreciate those. Uh, keep those keep those uh, thumbs ups coming in today. I don't know how many people will be joining us today. Um, you know, the, if you listen to CNBC and, and some of these other outfits, they're talking about, oh, it's a long weekend. There'll be hardly anything going on. I, I don't know if that's true anymore. As I said earlier, I think a lot of people are trading from home now. Uh, they're trading from wherever they are, and they don't have a broker. And in the old days, back in the 80s when I was a stockbroker, uh, we would have um, half the office wouldn't be there. Half the, half the brokers would not show up. They would, they would make deals. Uh, okay, July 4th, all right, uh, I want to take a long weekend with my family to go camping. So I'm going to hand you my book. You handle all my clients' calls for Friday the, before the long weekend. And then on the August long weekend, you take off. And, you know, we'll work these out between September... Labor Day and, 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 and Christmas, and we'll figure out these holidays together, and we'll always cover each other's books. And there might be two, three, four, five brokers that are in a cluster, and they always look after each other, and there's usually, you know, three out of five brokers are in the office, uh, or maybe two or out of five with an assistant or two to kind of handle any calls that might come in. Today, that doesn't work anymore. It, it's now you can just trade your account whenever you want to trade your account. You don't need to worry about a broker. As long as your phone is up and powered up and you got internet, you're in business. And uh, this might make today a volatile session. We might have a lot of activity going on here. I don't think hedge fund managers are taking today off either. I think they're taking advantage of today to try to make some money. Let's see what happens. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, happy Canada Day, Uncle Bruce says John Anderson. That's right. Today is Canada Day. It's Canada's anniversary and July 4th. It's America's anniversary. Chase is... Uh, Thumbs up 63. Hey, Chase, thanks for being here, buddy. As I don't mind dividend reinvestment of mutual funds, buying bargain, bargain price down periods. Don't mind that either. I hear you, buddy. John, here's 2 for you. 47 to 48. Good morning. Thanks, John, for these thumbs ups. We now have 66 of them in the system already. Thank you, everybody, for being here with 66 thumbs ups. I appreciate, uh, appreciate that momentum to kind of get this, uh, get this party started. Love it. I'm going to find out uh, in about, uh, oh, I don't know, what, 40-something odd minutes how it's all going um, and see how this uh, how this market wants to uh, react. Fantastic. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with options today. I know a number of you have options expiring today. A number of you have rolled into options that expire next week. We only have a four-day week next week, so we're going to be uh, four four-day trading on Tuesday to Friday. Should be interesting to see how that works out. I'm showing in the pre-market right now. Uh, Rocket Lab, it's down two cents. SoFi is down a penny. Uh, I got GameStop up 74 to 123.04. AMC down 12 cents. Matterport down three. 23 and Me down three. Spires up four cents. ATIP Physical Therapy down three cents. No change on uh, Smart Rent or Sextera at this point. No trading. Uh, Apple down 57 cents. 
we're talking quiet here. Uh, Goldman Sachs down 13 cents. Uh, 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 Cisco down seven. Tesla is up 878 right now to 682. Arc Innovations is up a dime, but it's trading at 39.99. That is cheap pricing here. That uh, see how that goes. Um, Microsoft uh, up six cents. Bed Bath Beyond down three to 494. Pfizer down 22 to 52.21. Uh, we got uh, HPQ um, uh, down six cents. Carvana up 17, and Twitter down a dime. That's what's going on over there. Um, I don't know. Let's see what's going on. Michael Burry of the uh, big short fame, the actual real Michael Burry, he thinks that the market sell-off may only be halfway there. I I wonder, really, uh, we're going to see another uh, uh, another you know 50% drop from here or something like that. Even, even uh, Dr. Doom, a guy named, uh, um, uh, I'll just get this up here. His name is Nuriel Rubini. Uh, he was in, in the uh, early 2000s as Dr. Doom, and he called for a big market sell-off way back when. And this was before the 2008-2009 economic calamity came through. And he was ultimately proved correct. Um, but uh, the global economy may get worse than the 70s and the Great Recession, a stagflationary debt crisis that would confound central banks and fiscal authorities is what he's talking about. Well, we'll see if it's going to be that bad. Uh, I really don't know. Uh, I, I look at um, the you know couple of things that that kind of keep me from being uh, all doom and gloom about the economy. And uh, the number one thing is we've just gone through a one decade uh, of change in one year, um, maybe twelve years of change in two years. We've gone from uh, nine, 2019 uh, range up to that point in time where it was quite normal for almost all of us to go to the office, go to the factory, go to our retail stores, wherever we worked to go to work. Few of us worked from home. Some did, but few. Now, uh, there's a huge chunk of us that work from home and never thought we would. Never in a million years ever thought it could be done. We're doing it. Not only are we working from home, we, we, we're working you know, remotely. What does that mean? It means wherever you go, you can be working. There are people who are working right now on summer holiday. They would normally take a one or two week summer holiday with their kids or with their significant other, uh, maybe visit relatives and friends in, a, in a, another city or another country. There are people right now who are taking a much longer holiday rather than a, a one or two week holiday they're taking a four or a six week holiday and they're having they're visiting several family members maybe one week at this family and then a week at another family many miles away uh, it might be a european vacay where two weeks in the uk two weeks in germany two weeks in italy um and two of those four six weeks on your own with nobody and four of those six weeks with family and friends and you're working wherever it is you are going to and you're making money and and this is now not a six-week holiday it's basically I'm, I'm visiting friends and family in between my work that I'm taking with me because my work is portable now and it doesn't matter where I am and what time I do my work this is all different this is all completely different this is becoming common world has completely changed. I just don't see us going into the traditional old school recession kind of an economy like we used to have. This this is the difference. I remember so vividly when I was in my late teens and my 20s how when in a town, a factory town with a big, you know, textile factory or shoe factory or car part factories when one of these cities would have one of their plants close up and it would even be like a, you know business is so slow that the auto parts manufacturer would just furlough the entire plant for like six weeks they would do a six-week shutdown and uh rather than you know lay off half of them they would just shut the whole thing off and and they would say to everybody uh you know six weeks gone take some holiday time if you want 
but we'll see in six weeks. Well, the whole community around that factory would be devastated. You'd have guys with car payment problems right away because, of course, how many people live paycheck to paycheck way back when? Zillions did because you never thought you'd be laid off from a good union paying type job and so you had people going into their bankers and saying yeah i got laid off at so-and-so automotive uh, you know can we work something out and and the bankers would be you know, try to figure out a way to help, help them out or the the individual would have a garage sale and they would offload their uh, skis and their golf clubs and problem is you're selling your stuff when everyone else around you is selling their stuff because everybody got laid off in your little town. It wasn't like you're the only guy that got laid off. All your friends got laid off. A lot of your relatives got laid off. The whole community around your community was in trouble. And so you would try to find employment to make a few bucks on the side between the six-week furlough. And uh, there were guys scrambling all over the place. All of a sudden, a whole bunch of new Pizza delivery drivers were in business, and uh, guys were cutting lawns in the summer that had not done that before, and on it went. It got worse as time went on in those back in those days when these factories, you'd have a company with 10 automotive plants in, a, in two or three states or a couple of provinces in Canada. And uh, a furlough would come, a layoff would come, and uh, th these factories would get orders from the car manufacturers for car parts, but it would be at half the, the number than before because the recession is just taking longer to kind of get through. These guys would now permanently start closing plants. They would realize we got to go down to six plants from 10 and we're going to dump the four plants that cost us the most money or have the most radical union members. Uh, or, or are just the most inefficient or the four plants that are going to require the most money to modernize. We're going to dump those off and we'll be down to six. And of the six, we're going to pour money into three of them to modernize them. And the other three, we're just going to pour in enough money to maintain them. The writing is on the wall that eventually this company down to three plants from 10. And that means 70% of the workers are Adios, amigos. You're out of a job, and uh, there is no, there's nowhere else you can go for that type of job because all the other car park guys are doing the same thing, and it was this this rust belt thing that was going on with inflation and high interest rates all at the same time. Total devastation. Today, I don't see that. I don't see factories across Illinois. Ohio, Pennsylvania, shutting down. There aren't factories like there used to be anymore. Not in the numbers that it used to be way back when. We just don't have that economy anymore. We're now far more, um, you know, brain oriented for our work. The grunt work that is being done, the actual making of car parts, are really done elsewhere. They're done overseas. They're done in places where we don't have to pay $38 an hour for a union member. They're done where the people who are making these parts have virtually no pension plan offered to them at all. They have so few rights when it comes to doing what they want to do with their work uh, environment or whatever, they'll be, they'll be suppressed or, or be fired and replaced with no recourse whatsoever. We've gone to the third world to make our first world a really comfortable place. And that's the bitter reality of what's happened since the 50s, 60s, and 70s to today. We've completely gone third world. And as long as this planet keeps producing more human beings than this planet needs, especially in the third world where birth rates are much higher than in the Western world, the Western world has a ready supply of slaves to make product at cheap prices. And that is the bitter, bitter reality of living in the first world economy versus a third world environment. It's just the way it is. And this is why once in a while we will see horror stories come out of Pakistan or Bangladesh or, uh, or other countries where, for example, um, There'll be a fire 
in a uh, textile mill factory where they make tops and what have you. The doors are locked. Uh, the employees can't get out. These are stories that used to happen in New York City back in the 1800s when, at that time, employees were a dime a dozen. Employers were ruthless with their people. They put them into 8 and 10, 12-story tall buildings in Manhattan that were basically brick-type factory buildings. And they uh, had these people working six days a week, 12 hours a day, and they had no rights. And every once in a while, a fire would break out and there would be casualties galore. And, and there was one fire in New York that became infamous with this entire uh, mess. I think it was called the Triangle Fire, if I'm not mistaken. And that changed everything. That changed. That was the beginning of uh, labor rights for workers because people were dying at work making shirts and pants for pennies. Uh, we've shifted that off elsewhere. Uh, yes, rights for Americans and Canadians and Western workers are much higher, much better than they ever were in the 1850s. But I can tell you, there are working conditions uh, back to the 1900s, early 1900s, still in existence all over the place in the third world and we exploit it for our benefit then we don't want to admit it we don't admit it but it's true uh as far as the recession goes i just don't see it coming like others are saying it might come it might be a mild limited little here little there thing but across the board i don't think so i've noticed uh, in the last two weeks uh mortgage rates are dropping mortgage rates have started to plummet because all of a sudden the treasury has plummeted by half a percentage point. All of a sudden mortgages are backing off from the high fives. We might be into the low fours in a hurry. Uh, that'll be interesting with housing. Um, interest rates regarding uh, loans for everything else might also m moderate. I have heard today that um, the investment bankers in uh, New York, London, Frankfurt, and elsewhere are reporting that a number of corporations that were scheduled or were expected to come to the bankers for bond offerings have pulled their offerings off the table. A number of corporations have said, uh, no, not interested right now in borrowing money. Um, we're not uh, thinking, we don't need it as desperately as, as uh, you know, others think we do. Um, we're going to uh, cut costs. And we're going to postpone how much money we borrow um, and when we borrow it, because we think that the rates are too high right now. We don't think that we need to be uh, subjected to the kind of interest rates that our bankers are telling us we now have to pay. This is interesting. In a, in a very short period of time, corporate America, corporate Canada, corporate Europe, corporate everywhere went from free money, money for nothing, less than inflation, now they're expected to pay inflation for interest rates. And these corporations are going, nope, we're not in the hole like uh, like uh, companies were in the 80s. Uh, yeah, we could always use additional cash. But you know what? We're not expanding our, our factories or our businesses this year. We're actually thinking of laying off people or we're thinking of a hiring freeze and or we're still in the middle of a complete turnover of our business and our company where... 95% of our people used to work at our head offices and our branch offices. Now, 90% of our people in the next year will all be working remotely. Only 10% of our people will be in the offices. We are going to offload office space. We're going to offload office furniture. We're going to shift training to be at home through virtual reality. We are cutting back travel by our salespeople and our VPs. We are lowering the cost of being in business dramatically. And we don't need expansion money. And we'll save money and we'll cut expenditure back rather than borrow at 8 or 10 or 12%. Thank you very much. And all of a sudden, the bankers in New York are going, uh, where's all our business going to come from? Because, you know, the deal is, is we, we, we have a company that borrows $500 million. What we do is, is we package up two-year, five-year, and seven-year bonds to make up that $500 million. Each 
pack, each bond has a different interest rate. The longer it is, the higher it is. And, and then we go to our mutual funds and pension fund guys and we we flog them this stuff, this 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 paper, and we take a commission on the we take a piece of the action as our commission. And if the corporation isn't coming to us to even issue the paper, we have nothing to sell. Uh, this is bad because normally it's the other way around. It's normally the companies come to us and say, we need $500 million for whatever purpose we need it for. And then we tell them what the price of the money is. And then we go to the pension funds and the hedge funds and all the other investment outfits, the ETFs, and sell them these bonds. And it's those guys that usually say, uh, that's not good enough. That's not a high enough interest rate. I'm not interested in investing or don't want to put any money into this sector of the economy right now. Bring me paper from uh, this sector of the economy, this area of the economy, but not that area or that area. But when the borrower, the borrower says to the banker, I ah, know, thanks. Uh, no, no, we're not. Um, we're not interested in raising money. I know you can raise us 500 million drop of a hat. We know that. And we appreciate knowing that. Well, we're just not going to borrow 500 million right now at uh, these kinds of interest rates. Uh, we'll 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 defer. This is unprecedented in corporate finance. This is not how it's supposed to work. But corporate America, corporate Canada, corporate everywhere has had such a good run the last 20 years. Most of these 20 years, you kids who are now in your 30s, first you grew up, you know, became teenagers. Then became into your 20s, became adults in your 20s. For the last 20 years, if you turned 25, 20 years ago, you're 45 now, you have never known an environment where money cost money. Uh, you've always been uh, in your entire lives, money is easy to get, money is easy to borrow. Mortgage rates are cheap, car loans are cheap. I see zero financing on car dealership ads all the time. That's what you used to see. Uh, you've never experienced a scenario where I can't get credit. I, you, I can't get it at all. Here, we're seeing corporate America and the other corporations saying, um, uh, you know, uh, we're not going to borrow right now. We've borrowed a lot in the last 10, 15 years. And what we're going to do now is we're going to concentrate on just paying back our, our debts. Uh, we're, we're paying off that easy money and we're not replacing it with expensive money. Or, well, you know, uh, we got a billion dollar bond offering coming up, you know, later throughout the year. We're only going to borrow 300 million of it. 700 million, we're going to pay off. We'll just give it back to you guys because we've got money in reserve here and we're going to reduce our expenditures and reduce our investments and we're going to sell off different divisions of our corporation. We're going to just pay off our debts and we're not going to borrow money at 8 or 10 or 12%. This is bad news. Uh, when corporate world, the corporate world doesn't need money to do business, then certain parts of business aren't in business. And that's where investment bankers are going, what's the deal here? Where the clients aren't uh, asking us for money. The only clients that are coming to us for money are the uh, the cruise lines. And, and some of the airlines are coming to us for money because uh, they're bleeding red ink all over the place. These guys are losing money and they need money. But the uh, the rest of corporate America and the rest of the corp corporate world, they're not bleeding money everywhere. Just certain areas are not doing too well. The very established entities are doing just fine. Thank you very much. And they're going, uh -uh. and when you get that, what do you have? Too much money lying around because the pension fund guys are going, hey, uh, hello, investment banker. Um, how, how come you're not offering me uh, loans, offers to, to buy bonds? Why aren't you sending me offers to buy a whole bunch of bonds from a whole bunch of companies? And the banker's going, because they're not interested in borrowing at this time. And the pension fund's going, hey, well, hold on a second. I got, I got $100 million maturing this week. For money that I lent companies five years ago, that that stuff is being paid off this week. I'm going to have another hundred million, and next week I got another hundred million coming in from the pensioners, from all those employees, so those teachers that are making their contributions. I'm going to have a quarter of a billion dollars lying around here in the next two weeks that I need to be making money with. It has to make money, um, 
and there's an 8% inflation problem right now. Um, I need to make money with this money. And the banker's going, I don't have an 8% return for you that you would like to invest in. I can get you an 8% loan. Like I can get you a bond that'll pay 8%, but you don't want to buy these guys. You've told me explicitly, I'm not putting money in this sector or this sector or this sector because I don't like the future there. Where you want to invest money, they don't want to borrow. This is a problem. What do you do now? You put them, you park your money. Where do you park it? 10 year treasury notes, two year treasury notes, five year treasury notes. You put them into short term treasury notes to just make some daily interest while you're shopping for the right place to put your money. You can't put the money into the stock market. If you're a pension fund and you're running a $200 million or $20 billion fund or whatever the size, a huge, big, fat fund. You can't have all of it in the stock market. You're only allowed a certain allocation in the market. And even then, in the market, you're only allowed so much of a percentage of your fund in any one stock. So you can't have all your money in Apple or all your money in IBM. No, 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 no. You might be limited to one, one half of 1% 1 of your market money in IBM. One half of 1% can be in Apple. No more. That's the way it is. And... You've got to diversify, and you, you better stay on top of that. You cannot break that rule. And if only 30% of all the money you have can be in the stock market, and you've got hundreds of millions of dollars coming in, cash, 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 and you can't put it into the market, into the stock market, you have to put it into the bond market, and you can't find a bond to buy, there's the problem with this economy. So it goes into the treasury. What does that mean? The U.S. Treasury goes up in value. The yield goes down in value, like right now, 2.92%. It goes down in yield. The yield gets worse, and the American dollar gets stronger because more money right now, 2.87% is in the U.S. 10-year 2.87%. More money goes into the U.S. Treasury, into the German Treasury for European-based pension funds, Spanish uh, Treasuries. It's the only place it can go. It's in the bond market, but it's just being parked. And they're searching for a better deal. But the corporations are going, I'm not paying you 8.5%, 9% for money. No, I'll pay you 4 It's not like we're only half a percentage point apart. No, we're a foot field apart here we are a mile away and inflation is a problem the federal reserves and others will keep raising rates but if the market doesn't want the money doesn't need to borrow the money the real rates will stay compressed it gets interesting when the fed is trying to raise rates and the street is keeping rates down because there's money sloshing around that nobody wants all of a sudden we got another problem on our hands and this is being talked about here in the uh, in the overall markets. <sighs> Hope that's not too complicated for you. It, it is an amazing system here. There's more money in the bond market, by the way, than the stock market. Always has been, always will be. It's not even close. The the uh, the options market. There's a ton of money in the options market. Gambling on the stock market, <laughs> but the stock market is directly affected by how the bond market is doing. That is a fact, and that's why we have to care. We have to care well, how the dollar is doing, how the 10-year note is doing, how Germans, uh, the Germany 10-year note is going, how's the British pound doing? We have to care because it affects us right back to our stock market and our, our corporate entities that we like to write options on. Some, uh, many of these corporate entities that we like to write options on are internationally um, active. They're active in the UK. They're active in Germany, all over Europe. They're active in Asia. And so we have to care how those economies are doing because it's going to affect how their stocks will do on the New York Stock Exchange. Quite an amazing scenario. 16 minutes to go, I think, uh, before we tar start trading on a quiet Friday, they say. We're down 84 um, on the Dow Jones right now. We're off uh, eight on S&P, eight and three quarters. We're down 36 on NASDAQ. The, the, the percentage loss now, 0.22 for S&P, 0.29 for the Dow, and 0.31 for NASDAQ. These markets are actually coming back to the break-even line as each minute's going by. We have 16 minutes to go before we open for trading, 
and we'll see how close to the break-even line we get as we move in on it. Oil is a little weaker now, down only up 267 instead of up three. Not a lot, just a little. Okay. Um, here we go. You know, Gavin is saying I picked up a thousand so far for my bench in rock and roll. Um, and Marcus, I, I have a question. Why is everyone talking about buying so far inspired today? Any news? They're just super cheap and it's ridiculous. Uh, Marcus is a uh, thumbs up 67. Dave 69. Olivia saying good morning. Cody, I'm number 76. Thank you, Bama Babe. I'm late to the party again. Welcome, Bama Babe. She's uh, thumbs up 77. Alex is here. Good morning, everybody. I'm thumbs up number 79. Thank you, everybody. Stressful day. Work has been easy money recently, but they're making me earn it today. That's terrible. Uh, loading up on more SoFi. Let's go, says Alberto. I'm not going to let this stock pass me by. Sometimes you have to buy when it's hard to do so. You just grab stuff and you take it, put it away. Anyway, let's see what's going on. Uh, Bauma, baby, I had to go to the grocery store early because the 4th of July guests get here this afternoon. All eight grandbabies and their parents pray for me. Pray for me. Oh, my gosh. Um, Alberto, uh, Tony says, uh, where's my Escalade? <laughs> Tony is here. Hi, Tony. Uh, Michael, Alberto, uh, you're trying to get more shares than Noto. Um, and hi there, Olivia. Olivia is saying good vibes to everybody. Uh, what else is going on here? Uh, um, BW is saying to Marcus, because they are so cheap, so much more of an average down on buying shares to DCA. Most here we're buying chunks up in the teens and 20s, uh, and that's what's going on. Uh, dollar cost averaging is what's happening here. Sell my house in, in Upper Marlboro. I got an alert from my Weather Channel app of all places about a cruise ship that hit an iceberg yesterday somewhere on Alaska. Didn't follow up on the article. That happened five days ago, and it's a nothing story. Ship's fine. El better till my average is still above ten bucks. This is an opportunity to average down on this stock. There you go, Michael. Yeah, mine too. I bought too many when it was higher. Hard to average down now. Malo, a big huge. Fat, what I don't know. Um, every Michael, everyone under seems to be about 20 cents lower average now. White feather, good morning. Hope everyone had a good holiday weekend or will have one. Uh, Larry Titus, good morning, everybody. Thumbs up, number 90 is reporting in. Happy Canada Day from Nucio. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the party, guys. Uh, we've got 95 thumbs ups courtesy of Cindy. Thank you all. Let's have a big, big day today. That would be terrific. Thank you guys so much for uh all of your uh, support of this channel, the lurkers, the subscribers, uh, the members, uh, folks who take the classes, uh, folks who uh, uh, look me up for one-on-one -on -one sessions. Uh, thank you all for your support. Keeps Jennifer and I going, keeps me on the air. I do appreciate it. Please consider becoming a member if you're not one already, uh, because members are the backbone of this channel to keep us on the uh, the air, the uh, the amount of money that uh, YouTube pays us is uh, laughable, but we thank you all so much for uh, coming through as members every month and uh, being here for us. You guys are the best. I'm just going to switch the comments over now to members only, um, and that, that's one of the privileges of being a member is to uh, talk to us uh, during market trading hours. And I love you all for being here. Appreciate it, DH is number 100 nick is 106 dq 106 as well 107 says dq and thank you john jepson thank you uncle bruce. have a great weekend everybody right on john um and uh, uh uncle bruce i read an article that royal caribbean is looking to add fuel surcharges to cruises this year also looking to ban smoking completely to try to help drive up casino business on the ships what are your thoughts yeah this this notion of allowing smoking in the casinos um on ships. I, I think it's a dead issue for cruise lines. I think they are definitely finding that a majority of cruisers are non-smokers now, and you're better off uh, just banning it all together because you turn off so many people when, when you go into a casino and it's just stuffed with smokers. As far as the fuel charges go, cruise lines have had a clause in their contracts that, that say if oil reaches over $70 a barrel, that they could impose a fuel surcharge, which used to be $10 a passenger per day. So if you're on a one week cruise with your significant other, that's 20 bucks a day for the two of you times seven days, $140 more for your cruise. 
uh, that adds up to a lot of money. You talk about a cruise ship with 2,500 passengers, and we're talking about $25,000 a day more in revenue times seven, 175000 more, and they call that uh, a surcharge on fuel. I, I don't think they're paying 175000 more, but, but then again, I could be wrong. It's interesting. These big, big ships with five and 6,000 passengers, yeah, you're talking half a million to 600,000 a day in added revenue coming in for a, for a seven day cruise. Well, now we're talking four million bucks, three and a half to four million dollars for the week. Uh, that's really big money. Yes, it is. Um, anyway, uh, Nick, I have made my motel to be a smoke free facility. Right on, Nick. Well done, sir. I'm sure your guests appreciate it, uh, especially the next guest coming in, the room they're going in. Doesn't smell like someone smoked in here. Pretty good stuff. Yeah, that's pretty common now for most hotels, and it is definitely appreciated across the board. Thank you all for being here. We got nine minutes to go. Um, I'm showing the Dow down just 80 now, and uh, S&P down 7, and the NASDAQ down <coughs> 29 points. Point. 0.19 of a percentage point on the S&P 500, 0.26 on the Dow and NASDAQ. So the three indexes are quickly coming to break even or close to it. See how this all works out. Um, time will tell. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Apple has ended imports of gold and tungsten from Russia. Apple has ended metal imports of those metals from Russia. In Interesting. More and more cutbacks coming. Okay. Uh, Cam Hines, good morning. 110 thumbs up here. Uh, happy Canada Day. Beers on me today. Nick, I'm going to lose smokers business, but it is worth it. Uh, I agree. Uh, it's definitely worth it, my friend. In the long run, um, yeah, it's the way to go. It's definitely the way to go. Less damage and, and less, you know, it, you don't have to treat the carpeting or, or, or the repainting of the walls all the time. It's just a good move. It really is. Uh, get the smoking out of that hotel if you can, buddy. Right on, everybody. Thank you for uh, popping in here with us. Appreciate this. Uh, it's Friday. It's option expiry day, guys. We're going to see how all this plays out. Excuse me. Uh, we're now at uh, a total of um, 112 thumbs ups. We have 28 minutes to go. I don't know if it's possible today. Whether we can, whether I can beg hard enough to get 200 thumbs ups before we start trading, we got 28 minutes. No, we have 18 minutes to do it. I might be dreaming here. We got 18 minutes, and for me to get to 200 thumbs ups, I'm going to need your help. I need 87 of them to come in in 17 minutes, and that that might be a bridge too far. If any of you out there can hit that thumbs up button for me, please nail it. Um, that would really help out. Um, and it just gives YouTube, uh, the artificial intelligence uh, systems at head office, they chew on these thumbs ups and they look at how many folks are watching, how many thumbs ups are coming in, how many comments are being engaged between the, uh, the host and his guests. And they, they start going, you know, we should promote this channel because this ratio is really good. These folks watch this guy for a long time and they uh, engage him. We should get more people coming in here um so again if you can help out with a thumbs up which is free to hand out 128 have come in now we only need 72 more to get to 200 i do appreciate it uh, it makes a difference you may know that um every youtuber asks for thumbs up every one of us asks and uh, we're told by youtube the more you can get versus the ratio of people watching you, uh, the better for your channel. So 129 have now uh, landed, 71 to go to get to 200. I thank you very much for this. Uh, we're into the last, I don't know, is it six minutes? See how many more come in. Thank you, everybody, for thumbs ups. Um, uh, here we go. Nick is saying, yeah, no carpet now. It's all vinyl in my hotel. I'll send you pictures of my room so you can show it to your group on smartphone. Olivia, I got thumbs up 113 for you. Uh, lame Duck, I got thumbs up number 118 for you. Thank you, guys. Uh, apparently, the markets are worse off now than when COVID hit in 2020. Who would have known the higher inflation and interest are worse than the global shutdown? Uh, yes, because global shutdowns 
end quickly. Uh, inflation and higher interest rates take longer to deal with and are much more painful. They have a longer, it's like, it's just like a, 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 a cold that just won't go away. Uh, it makes it tough. Olivia dislikes, funnily enough, help engagement on YouTube. That's true. I mean, if you hate the channel, give it a thumbs down. I get promoted either way. I just prefer seeing thumbs up. So, you know, just good for the ego. Splare, I'm alive. I'm awake. And good morning to you all. Good morning, my friend. Good to see you again today. Uh, welcome to Friday, July the 1st, the first day of the third quarter as we get ready to see what happens in the second half of the year versus the first half of the year, which was a disaster, a 42-year worst performance, uh, not as bad as since 1970. The year after man landed on the moon, you'd think that in 69, 70, you know, everything was going great. Uh, man landed on the moon in 69 and in 70. And, and uh, computers were coming into our lives. And, you know, it was the 70s, man. Um, this market is, uh, that's how bad it was in 1970 for the market. <laughs> it was a bad year. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Lane Duck, I always give you two thumbs ups on TV and one on computer. Thank you, buddy. Slayer. Hopefully this quarter will get better after earnings. Michael, isn't 1970? 52 years ago? Uh, oh, maybe you're right. 52 weeks ago. Uh, for some reason, the number 42 is in my head. Um, 42 weeks of 42 years of terrible performance, but that is 52 years ago. Oh my gosh. I, I so remember 1969 when Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. I remember that day. Uh, even my mom and dad wanted to be home in front of the TV for that. Um, I remember we were out, that was a Sunday, I believe it was a Sunday, and we were out uh, uh, at, at a local uh, uh, kind of a camping place, a uh, German club that my parents belonged to. They had some camping land that uh, we would spend weekends at. And uh, we came back home early uh, to be home by about, oh, five-ish or six, because I think he walked on the moon uh, Eastern time, uh, prime time, Eastern time uh, for television. And uh, we were home for that to uh, to uh, witness that. That was unbelievable. Uh, anyway, what can I say? Um, let's see. What else is going on? Uh, every channel sees that. Anyway, thank you, everybody, for being here. Yeah, back in 69, that was an amazing uh, day, uh, that July day. Absolutely amazing. Um, and I, I know I was... 15 at I think it was 14 or 15 at the time and uh you just you know I'm watching my parents watch this uh it was a big deal to them I mean my dad was born in 1929 uh his first 10 years on the planet you know from 29 to 39 not good years um and to see mankind now walk on the planet of the of the moon during his lifetime are you, are you kidding me um and my mother's mother was alive at that time. She was, I believe, with us at the time. She, too, was just blown away by it. Just, just wow. Uh, that's amazing. That was really something. It was really a game changer. Karim, did, did we, went, we went to the moon? It was 1969. And amazing how you remember it. That seems to be a really important day. Probably I would remember it as well. Yeah, I remember that. I remember, of course, uh, in 70, I guess, 70 or 71, uh, the second moon landing happened um, uh, not too long after, but the third one was Apollo 13, which didn't happen. And then that was 70. I believe that was 70. And um, uh, that was really something. When you, when you were witnessing that in real time, and that took, what, six, five, six days, uh, that whole disaster of the uh, capsule having the explosion and then going around the far side of the moon and coming back. Oh, those were long days, uh, and that's all it was on television. I mean, everything stopped, and that's the only story on TV. And we didn't have live cameras on board the the uh, the uh, Lem or or at all. Those guys shut everything down in space to preserve battery power to make it back. And so we were watching Talking Heads <clears throat> on TV, holding models, showing us with models the best they could tell us because they didn't know how bad it was because there were no photos transmitted back to NASA. 
NASA did not know how bad the explosion was until the astronauts returned with the cameras, with the film of them taking photos of the separation of the lunar module when they let it go just before re-entering Earth's atmosphere. They saw it with their own eyes, the, the, uh, the astronauts, but they took photos as well and brought them back. Then and only then, after they landed, did NASA really know how bad the explosion was. Terrifying. It was really something. Uh, anyway, 143, 145, the thumbs ups are here. Larry has hit the bell. Thanks, Larry, for this. Uh, we've had 147 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. Hit us. Get us to 200 as quick as you can, people. Hit the thumbs up for us. Thanks, Larry. We're up and we're in business now. Let's see what's going on here. What is this market going to do this morning? It's a Friday, July 1, 2022. We're down 28 points on the Dow only is what I think I see. Uh, I think that's what we're doing. Um, let's see. I've got uh, uh, S&P down two points and NASDAQ down 16. Uh, GM shares are halted right now, pending an earnings warning announcement that almost never happens. Um, that is a chip shipment timing and supply chain disruption uh, are weighing on GM. We're waiting for GM to warn its investors, its shareholders, just how bad it's going to be. This is going to be interesting. Um, oh, 9-11, we remember that. That was another one that stopped the world, of course. Uh, we're down 10 on the Dow. Um, uh, we got Tesla up 11 bucks, uh, 685. SoFi up a penny at 528. We got GameStop 122.68, down 31 cents. Uh, waiting to see what is going to happen with the announcement on General Motors. Uh, let me see if I can uh, get my computer to my big ass iPad, I'll get it to show me GM. I'm showing it at 3156 right now for GM. Um, says a headline, GM stock slumps after earnings warning as chip shipment timing and supply chain disruptions weigh on its earnings. Uh, 3145 down 32 cents is the last quote I've got. Um, and I don't know if it's, it looks like it's trading right now, 3141. Not 100% sure we'll watch for that. Um, we're down 55 now on the Dow, um, 3134 on General Motors. I think we're trading. Uh, we're off 55 on the Dow. We're off eight on S&P, down 44 on NASDAQ. Definitely turned red. Oil is up 264 a barrel. Uh, again, I don't know why oil would go up with these kinds of this kind of bad news. Uh, this is where oil goes down too, especially if GM doesn't pump out as many cars or trucks. If a whole bunch of cars and trucks are not hitting the road, a whole bunch of cars and trucks aren't burning oil. Uh, why would it go up? That makes no sense. Every day, cars and trucks die from wear and tear. You have to replace them to keep the fleet going. Um, if automakers can't produce the cars that are being retired and that are dying off, we have fewer vehicles burning less fuel. And of course, if the vehicles coming off the line are more efficient than the cars that are dying, which only makes sense if a 15-year-old truck dies and a new truck comes out, the thinking is the new truck is more efficient than the old one, cheaper to operate, easier to sell to the new buyer. You think we'd be using a lot less fuel, we would have lower prices. Something is not adding up here. I don't know. Uh, let's see what's going on. Um, here comes the dip. I need a beer to go with this. Christina, what are we doing today? I just got off my flight. Welcome. Uh, touch grass, Russia. Laugh out loud. What's going on? Hold the line, says uh, Duncan. Hold the line. We've got um, the uh, Dow right now up five again. It's turned around and gone up. We're uh, unchanged, more or less, on S&P. We're down 25 on NASDAQ. We've got uh, Matterport up $0.04. Cents, smart rent down 20 <laughs> Tesla up $8. SoFi up $0.03 cents to $5.30. GameStop up $0.45. Cents, $122.75. GM right now down 21 at $31.55. Uh, doesn't seem to have a dramatic uh, effect on the GM stock. Um, headline coronavirus update, the U.S. is preparing for a fall and winter spike in COVID-19 cases. That's the deal there. Um, I don't know. We'll see what, uh, what we got. We're only down 18 cents on GM. It doesn't seem to be affecting the market all that much at all. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Alberto Vilbas, are you on? I was wondering how you made out with that GameStop covered call last week. Um, we are showing GameStop 122.56, only up 26 cents. General Motors at 31.55, 31.71, down only a nickel now on uh, GM. Uh, the Dow down 13, nothing much there. Down six on SP, down 50 on NASDAQ. Trying to find out. Mark is trying to figure out where to go and what it should do. We were down over 170 on the pre-market today at one point, hour and a half in, uh, with an hour and a half to go. But we've really uh, eliminated a lot of the red uh, on this market. All right, we're up 115 on GameStop now. 123.45, Spire up a penny. Apple down eight cents. AMC up 43. It's at 13.98. ATIP down 39 cents. Rocket Lab down three. Sixtera down 18. ME up three. Pfizer down 38 after a big day yesterday. HPQ down 18 more to 32.60. Um, Home Depot up 129 to 275.56. Vanek down 628 at 197. I think this is the low of the year. Yep. We are at the low of the year on Vanek at 197. IBM is down 18 cents. Microsoft down 157. Goldman down just 99 cents. Cisco down 34 cents. Meta down 368. Amazon is up 3 cents. Google down 30 bucks. Bed Bath Beyond down 6 cents to 491. Blackberry up 4 to 530. Five. Real Caribbean down six. Um, Carnival down two pennies. Target down 165. JP Morgan down 31. Costco up 333. Walmart down a penny. Nvidia down five dollars. Disney up two cents. American Airlines up nine. Netflix up two pennies. We're not getting much changes here. Moderna down two bucks at 140. There you have it, folks. Uh, at the moment, we're down 71 on the Dow. Now we're down 55. Tesla's up just three now. It was up higher than this, so like a $18 gain at one point. And GameStop up 61 cents to 122.91. GM now up 43 cents to 32.17. It looks like this GM halt profit warning uh, from supply chain is just not being viewed seriously by the market. It, it just doesn't seem to care. Heard it before, heard it elsewhere. Not a problem. Stocks 32.23 up 47 cents. Go figure on GM. Go figure. Don't know what to make of it. Uh, we're down 36 on the Dow right now. Good morning from Bama Babe to Christina. BW, it's amazing when you mentioned the moon, Uncle Bruce Rocket Lab partnering with NASA, sending the capstone satellite to the moon. Yet down, uh, as SP goes, um, uh, SpaceX hasn't even gotten to that orbit yet. What the face? What's going on? I don't know. It is uh, it is a different world today than what we had back then, for sure. America uh, in the 70s, oh, things change. By 72, um, man had been to the moon a few more times, by 74, I guess. And then Congress cut funding for NASA by like 80%. And 50,000 NASA workers, these rocket scientists, were laid off. Uh, kind of a big, dumb move by the United States at that time because you had this talent all working for this, you know, outer space uh, project, which put America at the forefront of technology globally. And America gave it away. They just, just gave it away. Uh, these guys went to form other companies, and they went out. Yeah, sure. Uh, some of them uh, did really great things, but the America Space Program was the leader and then quickly backed off again, and others slowly came on over decades. And it's unfortunate. Uh, there, were talk, there was talk about manned missions to Mars or future missions to the moon. Never happened again. And here we are many, many decades later with nothing to show for it. But... It is what it is. Uh, what can I say? Uh, not much you can do, but it is. It, it took a lot of money, and what can I say? It's a, it's a different world, and there were pressures on the uh, on the economy at that time. Uh, of course, uh, Vietnam was costing America billions a week, just draining it of money as well. So yeah, it was pretty tough. The Dow down thirty now, um, down six and a half on S and P, and down sixty two on Nasdaq. 
We got the GM up 60 cents, 3238. This GM announcement and halt didn't seem to hurt the stock at all. Tesla's up 285. SoFi's up a penny. GameStop up 70 to 123 at the moment, down 39 on the Dow. There you are. There's where we're at right here, folks. Um, welcome to the show and, and uh, welcome to the to the Friday edition. Options ex expiring today. What's going to happen? How's it going to go? We'll find out. We're not going to 150 bucks a share in GameStop. I can tell you that. That's not happening. Uh, 102.67 up 37 cents. 115,000 traded. We're not going anywhere. I mean, it is quiet uh, here. I've got uh, I've got the Dow down 20, Matterport down eight, and the volume there 224,000. The smart rent down 34 cents. Uh, had a good run last hour yesterday. It climbed, it climbed, it climbed. Down 34 right now on 81,000 shares. What happened to the overnight? Uh, Tesla 646 higher at 679.88. SoFi trading at 530 now up three on 2.2 million shares. Uh, GameStop 123.20 up 90. Spire down two uh, to $1.14. 26,000 shares traded on Spire. Talk about outer space uh, being you know a non-factor these days. Apple down 19 cents, 136.53. AMC 1393 up 38. Pfizer 52.09 down 34. HPQ down two at 32.76. Twitter down 19. Home Depot up 284. Uh, Robinhood up, down nine, 819. 819 on Robinhood. That stock earlier this week reached, uh, what was that, 930 uh, something, 940 a share. Now it's backed off to 814. No mergers there. Uh, Vanek down five bucks to 198. IBM down seven cents. Microsoft just off 63. Goldman unchanged now. Cisco down 21. Meta down 424. Amazon up 82. Google down $16 at the moment, um, now $21. Amazon is up 70 cents. Google is up 21 bucks. Um, Bed Bath Beyond down, uh, sorry, Google down 21. Pardon me, it's negative. Bed Bath Beyond down seven. Blackberry down two. Rocket, uh, Royal Caribbean uh, just up uh, a couple of pennies here, uh, five cents. And uh, JP Morgan up 55. Costco up 750. Another good day today on Costco. 486 uh, in the last week. Um, geez, uh, what was it? Uh, it was at 464 on on the 30th. That was uh, yesterday. Now it's 487. Um, look at this quote here. On on the 17th of June was 447. We're up 40 bucks from June 17. Um, yeah. Up there you have it. Uh, the low uh, of uh, 416 on May the 20th uh, has been, you know, nicely corrected. We're, the all-time low, the 52-week low, 396. We're not anywhere near that. So Costco rebounding right now uh, despite issues with deliveries and supply chains and what have you. The Dow is up 55.9, up 80 now. Make that 80 points for the Dow Jones. We're up nine on S&P. We're only down two on NASDAQ. We are turning this market around right now. What is going to happen? Um, Splair is wondering if we're going to hit 540 on SoFi. 534 now, up seven cents. Uh, there you go. Um, Alberto is saying, uh, everybody, I'm sitting, on a couple, I'm sitting on a couple of GameStop 125s and uh, Boeing 141s. Are we dipping or popping? Hmm, what's going to happen? GameStop 123.73 up 143. Boeing is at uh, 138.49. Uh, it's up 177 right now. Alberto is out of the money on Boeing, but he's in the money, or no, he's out of the money also on GameStop. They're both out of the money right now with the Dow up just 65. I really don't know if we've got a big run coming or not. I, don't, I wouldn't know why, to be honest. Uh, up nine on SP, down four on NASDAQ. Oil up 265. Still, uh, there you have it. Um, Barron's headline, stocks are falling to start the second half of the year. Rate fears linger. That's the headline over there. We're up 750 on Tesla, 7681 a share. SoFi up 7, 534. Dow up 61 points. GameStop up 120 
to uh, 123.50. GM up 76 cents. A nothing burger on the GM trade halt. Didn't have any issue on it at all. There you go. Uh, 123.40 on GameStop, everybody. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. 114 on Spire. Down two cents. Like to see that turn around. Smart rent down 30. Coming back a little, like maybe a little, uh, up up 11 cents from the low of the day. Uh, so it's a little recovery. And uh, 100,000 traded only. Uh, down six and a half cents on Matterport. That got as slow as 357. We're now 360. So a titch better, up 49 on the down. Um, at TIF, TIF Sing, I bought my HBQ July 15, $35 calls. I bought them back for 21 cents. Nice going, TIFF. I suspect you sold them for more than that. Uh, nicely done. Uh, Tesla up 760. SoFi up, up a dime to 537 on SoFi. GameStop 124.18 now up 188. A little gain going on right now on GameStop. Welcome to the channel, everybody. Nice to have you here. Uh, the thumbs up meter now is reading one. 61. Thank you, guys. Uh, we're only 16 minutes in. We got 161 thumbs up sitting here. They're coming in bit by bit. Thank you, everybody. Bring them on. Thank you, everybody. A tiff is saying, I wrote those uh, HPQs for 73. I bought them back for 21 cents. Uh, that's pretty good. And making a profit of 52 cents doesn't sound like a lot of money, but when you make a profit of 52 cents on a 73 cent deal, uh, that is really good money. Uh, Christina, I sold five $124 uh, um, uh, GameStop contracts today uh, for a buck 82. They expire today. Uh, and that GameStop right now, 124.48. So they're 48 cents in the money. Uh, she sold them for 182. So theoretically, there's a dollar 40 of, of shrinkage here. The question is, where will GameStop be at the end of the day? That's what we'll watch for. Christina, way to go. Let's see how it goes. Alberto, TF, uh, nice work there on those uh, HPQs. Now move up HPQ, says Tiff, so I can sell calls again. Exactly. HPQ down 7, uh, 32.70. The low of the day today, 32.52. They've come back 18 cents. If they want to go higher, Tiff will hit that sell button and write calls yet again. That's the beauty of being an option writer, you can be a day trader being an option writer. You really can be a day trader. Christina does it. Tiff does it. Um, Alberto occasionally will do it. Uh, uh, Michael will do it. Bama Babe. If the opportunity arises, my viewers will do a day trade on an option. And why not? It, sometimes it's two. Sometimes you can do three trades in a way in a day. And if you uh, trade the same stock over and over and over again with by writing and buying back, writing and buying back, at the end of the day, you do the math and you go, well, I wrote five at a time and I wrote four times. So I wrote 20 contracts and the total amount of money I made on all those contracts was 80 cents. Uh, do the math. I made a lot of money today. And that is how you do it. You don't make a million on a trade. You make thousands and thousands on multiple trades that are just being given to you time and time again. Alberto, Christina, thumbs up. Uh, Christina, Alberto, only if it stays below 124, laugh out loud. I've made over three grand this week. Uh, Alberto, way to go, uncle. Uh, not your daddy so far. These markets are rigged against me. I go long, stock goes down, sell a cover call, stocks rip. Uh, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work for some folks, but all in all, look at that market now 150 gain on the Dow, a 150 point rip higher on the Dow. Matterport only down two, smart rent still down, but only down 24 now. Tesla's up 11 bucks. SoFi at 544. Splare, that 540 number, annihilated. We're up 16 cents on SoFi. We're up 165 on GameStop, uh, 123.95, back under 124, which means Christina's call options are worthless, and she likes it that way because she's going to buy them back for less money. Nice going. Beautiful. Uh, Michael, you and Austin should sit together. Christina, so I did like you should 
do a butterfly then. Um, Berto, Christina, it will. Let's see it dip into the 110 range. Uh, where else are we at right now? Um, we got uh, GameStop at 124 even here. Spire down three, Apple up 82, AMC is up 60, ATIP is up four and a half, Rocket Lab is up three, Sextera is up three, ME is up three. They're all green now. Pfizer still down 40, HPQ coming back, 3266. Only down uh, a little here, um, like 11 cents. Coming back, watching these markets carefully. 147 gain on the Dow, 18 on S&P, 37 on the NASDAQ right now. Uh, oil up, up 245. There is the deal. Uh, headline, believe it or not, gas prices have been edging down before July 4th, long weekend. They've been going lower. Interesting. Home Depot and Boeing are the leaders to move up the Dow, apparently. Uh, and uh, there was something else I wanted to catch. What was that headline there? Uh, final S and P uh, final. Um, uh, where was that? Hang on a second. I saw a headline. I want to read it. Uh, now I can't find the dang thing. Hang on. Where is it? Where is it? Bruce? Final manufacturing PMI fifty two point seven in June versus initial fifty two point four. Just a tiny bit better. All right, there it is. Uh, we're up one eleven now. One nineteen on the Dow. Matterport just down a penny. <clears throat> uh, smart rent uh, at four twenty nine uh, now four thirty. It's come back nineteen cents. It's down twenty two now. Uh, Tesla up nine bucks. SoFi up thirteen to five forty. GameStop one twenty four thirty three up two hundred three. Got Spire down three. Apple up seventy nine. AMC up fifty two. ATIP up four and a half. Rocket Lab and Sextera are up three. ME up four and a half cents to two fifty two. HBQ down seventeen. Uh, Home Depot up 477. Uh, Vanek still down 540. IBM up 14. It's gone green. Microsoft is only down 23. Trying to go green here. Goldman is green up 242. Cisco just down 20 cents. Meta platforms down 391. Amazon is green up 138, 148 now. Google down 940. Uh, at the moment, um, we've got. Costco up 920, NVIDIA down 360. American Airlines up 30 cents, Netflix up three bucks. So we got some green showing up now, up 133 on the Dow Jones at the moment. Matterport up a penny. Okay. GameStop 123.43. Just gave up some ground here, 123.60 at the moment. Everybody, thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Tiff says, not your daddy so far. You, you and Austin should do the, see, the opposite trade at the same time, uh, and then let's see what happens. My guess is that will that'll create a black hole. <laughs> Alberto, this green is hurting my eyes. I, I can't stand it. it. It's burning my eyes. Uh, Matterport up four cents. Uh, Smart rent only down 15. It's come up another nickel. Tesla's up 15 bucks. So far, 546 up 18 cents. GameStop 124.19 up 189. Couple of greenies, greenies coming. Couple of greenies. Uh, let's see how it goes. Up dips, down dips, and everything else in between. That's the way it is. Uh, that's the way it is. Oh my gosh. Um, Yep, yep, yep. There you go. All righty. <laughs> Watching all kinds of different quotes going through here, folks. Uh, don't mind me. I'm just keeping an eye on these markets like you are. Uh, see what's going on. Uh, the Tour de France winner will burn the equivalent of 200 Big Macs 210 Big Macs in 24 days. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of calories. Uh, yeah, these guys, they take in a ton of calories every day. Keep that body going. Unbelievable. Amazing. Just amazing. 
Uh, thank you all for being here today, joining us. We have now got 171 thumbs ups in the house. I appreciate it. Uh, 29 more to go, and we've got 200 in the house. I thank you all for that. Um, Nick is giving me a message here. Uh, Uncle Bruce, I have been, I have bought Tesla. I got an average of 699. Will I get a chance to get out today? Um, 689 is where it's at. Ten dollars away for our friend, um, and he's up 16 bucks already. So he's got a shot. He's got a shot. Um, let's see what happens. Goldman Sachs moves 233. Says uh, Duncan. Yeah, Nick, you're at 688.88 right now. Uh, you're you know you're a lot closer now than you were last night. So. so. Let's start with that. Um, now the question is, if it does hit six ninety nine, what's the upside for you? Is it just going to go to seven oh three or seven ten or seven thirteen? What can the upside be? We know Tesla can gain forty fifty bucks in a day. We know that. Will it? There we have it. That's what we're wondering. Six eighty nine. Let's keep an eye on Tesla for uh, for uh, Nick today. M Michael Stink offer in for Apple one forties. For next Friday, Michael is trying to write Apple call. Apple calls um, the market on the, the stock right now is one thirty seven ninety six. He's trying to write one forties. Uh, the stock's up one twenty four. A little more movement on the upside, and he'll get off one forties. Hopefully for a nice fill. Friends, uh, I hate when the market jumps with no catalyst. Why are you running? Uh, why? Why? It's just, it just does. This market is oversold. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. This market is way oversold. Uh, right now, uh, the the Dow is up 134 right now. 134 gain. Make it 142. Matterport is nicely up six cents. Uh, and we've got smart rent down 18 out of 433. It's coming back. Tesla still at 686. So far, 546 up 18 cents. GameStop 124.11 up 181. Uh, Spire 120 and a half. It's up four and a half cents. Spire is green. Apple 137.95. AMC up 13.95. Up to 13.95. ATIP is green. Seven cents to the green at 148. Rocket Lab is up seven to 386. Sextera up three and ME up 6.3 cents to 254. We are getting some green across these former SPACs of ours. Nice to see it up 140 on the Dow Jones right now. Lots to watch, uh, lots to follow. Uh, Austin reporting for duty, one Red Bull, and I'm all jacked. Should I take a look? 100-something. Uh, uh, wait till, uh, did he say SoFi is up? Wait a minute, wait a minute, that can't be right. That can't be right. Uh, yeah, up uh, 21 now. We're up 21 cents on SoFi, 548. Uh, we're uh, trading 2. Point, uh, what was it? Is it over 2.2 million? The last I saw. Hang on, my phone will update in a minute. Uh, GameStop 123.32 up a dollar. Um, yeah, 4.3, 4.4 million now on SoFi at 548, the high of the day. 4.4 uh, million shares. Let's go so far. Uh, Tesla's up 1640 to 689.89. Can Tesla go up 10 more dollars for Nick today? The, the Dow up 159. It's looking fine. We're up eight cents, 8.7 cents on Matterport. Smart rent down 17 coming back. Yeah, we're uh, rolling on uh, so far. Uh, GameStop up 126. Um, now up only 41 cents. GameStop backing off a little bit. Uh, Apple up 111. Spire up 4.8. Um, up 6.5 on ATIP. We got some green showing here, guys. Let's follow this. Uh, yes, Goyote, SoFi, big green spike. Tiff, Austin, only 20 cents right now. Nothing burger. Austin, Bruce, it has been months since we had a successful zzz. Um, these SoFi shares born yesterday at 525 are growing up so fast, says Coyote. <laughs> 544. Austin, uh, Tiff, uh, yeah, but the further we get from that five range, the happier I am. I'll take a penny. It's a Friday bull trap, says Michael. Christina, I just wrote a short position for Tesla. There you go. Uh, we are now at uh, 686 on Tesla, up 13. The Dow up 109. Uh, we're only up two pennies on Matterport now. Um, 
SoFi 544, GameStop 122.68 up 38 cents. Spire holding a four and a half cent gain right now. All righty. Uh, let's go. Christina, $690 put expiring today for $805. Uh, 690 put, uh, which is now in the money. 313 uh, expires tonight. The stock better move either way. Goes up for Nick or down for Christina. Uh, we'll see. 688 last trade on Tesla. Coyote, Michael, they have to learn the hard way. Christina, only two, but they could do some damage. Austin, Michael, dang it, Mike, why can't you just be happy? <laughs> well, you know, how can I say? Uh, one, we're up 111 on the Dow right now, I think. Oh, my gosh. All righty. 156 gain on the Dow right here. Tesla, 689.91, up $16. SoFi, 547, up 20. GameStop, 123.56, up 126. Spire, up four. All righty. Um, Tiff, Austin, don't get a heart attack when SoFi goes over 10 bucks. The hospital bill will be greater than your SoFi gains. BW, quote from Charles Payne this AM, more than $30 trillion has been vanished around the world as there were few safe havens and winners like commodities have been slammed recently geez that hurts christina i'm counting on that 10 30 dip austin and tiff we can dream uh we got uh, tesla uh, at 688 uh 60 up 15 dollars the dow up 127 uh so far 547 up 20 and a GameStop 123.40 now up 110. Spire up for Tesla now up 14 to 687. Uh, Christina needs a dip on Tesla. Nick needs a run on Tesla. It can't stay where it is. It has to move one way or another for someone to make money. Now, theoretically, you could go down $10 and then go up 20. Everybody's happy. I mean, it could do that. Anything is possible. I don't know. We'll see. 690 on Tesla. Here we go. We're we're seeing all kinds of movement all over the place. The ISM uh, in manufacturing index falls to the lowest level since June 2020. Construction spending down 0.1% in May after revised 0.8 gain the month prior. Headlines keep coming out from these uh, all kinds of places. Kiwi is thumbs up 171. Not your daddy so far. Let's have Spire drop like four bucks real quick. Pretty, pretty please. Christina, we can both be winners. And you're right. You can both be winners. 688.93. No question about it. You can both come out of this smelling like a rose. No question. So far, 546 up 18. GameStop 122.78 up 48 cents. Spire one dollar nineteen cents up three. Matterport unchanged. Smart rent down seventeen. The Dow only up sixty eight. We're gain, going off. We're coming down. Uh, Gaiotti, uh, I was doing shareholder voting for Tesla this week. Uh, they have items on their on their like better reporting of child labor and more reporting on lobbying spending, and the board recommended against to both of those. There you go. Up 63 points right now on the Dow Jones. Uh, <clears throat> Tesla down thir uh, up 13 to 686. Uh, 683, we just dropped on Tesla. Christina's puts are going up. Uh, she's in the money now. $6.15 at 683.65. Uh, they're going the right direction for Christina right now. 683.12, another dip here. Uh, she's approaching $7 book value, but they die tonight. Uh, she needs a drop, and she needs it now. Watch this closely. Let's see what happens. 681.66, it's backing off again. Her puts are now book valued at 834. I think she paid nine something for them. She's got to be making money. I suspect she might be making money here. Get ready. Hopefully, she'll put in a good trade, and we'll see what happens. The Dow was only up 28. Uh, GameStop is negative 12 cents. Uh, those of you option writers out there on GameStop, you got to be smiling. Uh, woot, woot, says Christina. Woot, woot, better set a limit 
Austin, um, got a nice sell recommendation-ish from ISS Eva, whoever that is. Uh, Michael uh, Austin, ha, we're now at 682.35 on Tesla, 682.50. That means her contracts have a book value of 750 each, her puts. And, uh, and now the, the question is, is there another 3 to $5 on the down dip here? Will this stock reach 12 in the money, 13 in the money for her, and she'll take a nice flip? I don't know. We'll see. I don't know what the value of that contract is because I don't have live quotes on, on these puts. Um, we'll see how her Tesla 690 puts are doing uh, as we move on. We're up 45 on the Dow, up 9 on S&P, up 37 on NASDAQ. Watch this market closely um kind of funny the tesla board wants everybody to vote against their child labor law documents on china much share uh, tesla you think that's what it is 682.36 on uh, tesla it's it's falling off from that 689 range to here what's it going to do uh the dow up only 38 if this market keeps backing off tesla will back off too and it will put christina into the money um SoFi 543 up 16, GameStop 122.33 up 3. Uh, we're jumping around that break-even level again, okay? Mm. Never a dull moment. 681 on Tesla. We're now in the money. 861 uh, in the money. That's almost what she paid for her put. She's definitely making money. 680.20. Oh, yeah, we're now 980 in the money. That's more than what Christina bottom for. She sold for twelve sixty five. Nice job, Christina. Um, I can't remember what you paid for him. Uh, let's take a look here. I think uh, I know you're here. Here it is. Uh, uh, you bought him for. Uh, where did you do it? Uh, oh, you, you told me. Yeah, I think you told us. Uh, was it nine something? I can't remember. Uh, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> now, if the stock wants to go to, you know, seven ten, Nick will make money. Uh, wouldn't that be great? Oh my goodness, Austin! Friday marks another week. SoFi collects one hundred million in fresh deposits. How about that? Go SoFi, go. Um, we're down twelve on the Dow. Um, we're uh, we're um, Tesla six seventy nine now. Um, uh, six eighty one. We're jumping around. So five five forty four up sixteen. GameStop one twenty two sixty four up thirty four cents. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, let's see. Spire one twenty up four. There it is. A two thirty four gain on the down now. Four point gain on the down now. We're jumping around. GM is swinging to a gain. Rallies one and a half percent after being down as much as one point six percent earlier. Yeah, GM is doing okay. Uh, GameStop one twenty two thirty three up just three cents unbelievable uh what a what a run what a crazy day today welcome one and all to the show uh never a dull moment here um with what we're following my goodness all kinds of stuff going on the dow up now 25 uh turning around a little bit tesla back to 682 coming back on again so far 546 up 18 cents and uh, gamestop up 46 cents i think 122 uh, or back 122.55 up 25 cents. The range for a GameStop today, uh, the low has been. Uh, hang on one second, let me get that out of there. The low for GameStop 120.76, the high 125.17. So, you know, 440 move today is all we've had at this point in time, right? Interesting, interesting stuff. All righty, the Dow up. Now down, down negative one point. We just went right again on the uh, on the Dow. Uh, uh, Tesla six eighty one, SoFi five forty five, up eighteen. GameStop one twenty two seventy four, up forty four. There you go, everybody. Um, watching a lot of headlines going across. My goodness, uh, Apple uh, backed off. I don't think Michael got his trade done here. He's gonna try to. He's trying to get a stink offer on his 140 Apple game, uh, Apple calls for next Friday. He's at uh, up 60 cents at 137.32, but we backed off a bit. Apple could only reach 137, 138.32, and it's now 137.32. Uh, we'll see if Apple can come on another dollar here and get Michael a nice little fill. 
Um, ATIP up a nickel. Rocket Lab up 3.6 cents. Six star down 15. ME up five. There you have it. Um, over on Pfizer, we're down 55, but HPQ, we're off 45 cents again. Uh, Home Depot up four bucks. Um, Vanek down 5.43. Um, IBM down 95 cents. Microsoft is up 73, only at 257.50. Goldman down 45 cents, now down 34. Had been up a few bucks. Cisco down 43 cents. Meta down 323. Amazon up 224. Google up 12 bucks. Make it negative 12 bucks. Bed Bath Beyond down 24 to 472. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Uh, Target down 63 cents. JP Morgan down three. Costco up 1160. Walmart up 72. Nvidia down 250 at 149.09. Disney up a dollar to $95. Royal Bank down a dime. American Airlines up 15 cents now at $12.84. There you go. There's a, a little brief summary of some of our faves. We're up 8.7 on the Dow. It's a flat kind of day, but there is volatility here and there. We've seen a lot of this. 682 now on uh, Tesla. 682 on Tesla. Up eight bucks. Yep, 681. Wow, lots of movement here. Okay. And we're up a quarter on the GameStop, 122.56 right there. There's there's where we're at, you guys. Thank you all for being here. We got the, uh, the show here. We have the channel today, 176 thumbs ups. Thank you for that, guys. We're so close to 200. I think we might make it. Um, thank you, everybody, uh, for helping now getting us towards 200 thumbs ups uh we've got uh, sofi looking interesting says splare austin sofi current ratio well over five times and i have to read articles and listen to analysts talk about bankruptcy ridiculous yeah. just ridiculous uh yeah sofi is going to make a lot a lot of people a lot of money if you sit into this stock you're going to make a ton of money these guys are on their way to profitability big time what can I say? So it's 540, up 13 cents right now. The Dow down 98. We're going into a bit of a dip on the Dow. Uh, down 98 right now. <clears throat> uh, GameStop, 121.55, down 75 cents. Those of you who've written GameStop calls, they're backing off again. The stock is coming out of the money on some of these calls. Should be interesting to see how that reacts for some of you out there. I think, Christina, did you not write 124s? Am I... Am I not mistaken? You wrote 124s. Uh, they're out of the money now. Um, and HPQ is nosediving. Ouch, right now, says Tiff. Keep an eye on that. Dow's down 110 right now, 114 on the Dow. Tesla down five bucks, 678. Interesting market here. Um, we're at uh, SoFi 540, up 13. And GameStop now down 60 cents to 121.70. The low of the day, 120. 76. We're within a dollar quickly. We almost got to within a dollar of the low of the day. We just jumped here to 122, but we're awful close to another low on GameStop if this uh, selling pattern and this flow keeps coming on GameStop. More stock coming in. 316,000 traded on GameStop as we are towards the lower end of our day range now at 122.07. Spire 122. Um, the 122.3 up six cents, 438,000 traded. The low on Spire today was 113. The all time low, 112. I think that was yesterday. We're now at 122. The high already, 128 on Spire. A little recovery here. I don't know how much, but it's not quite as bad looking as yesterday, is it? Uh, man, oh man. Come on, Spire. 540 on SoFi, 677 on Tesla. The Dow down 133 right now. Mm, uh, U.S. manufacturers grow at the slowest pace in two years. The ISM survey finds as demand softens. This is what we've been hearing about. That's uh, what we were talking about. Um, let's see here. Um, 
let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, Christina, I bought for eight oh five, and she sold at twelve sixty five. Nice trade, Christina, on two contracts. Sorry, I was trading Bama, babe. Christina, great job. Christina looks like my one twenty four Game Stops are shrinking. Are they indeed one twenty two on the stock? You're out of the money. They are definitely going to shrink, and that is good stuff. Uh, way to go. We board in three hours for our flight. Like all the extra money is going there. The kids will have a good time. <laughs> I think Christina's heading for a cruise ship today. Uh, <laughs> you gotta love it, man. I love it. Trading at the airport, getting on another flight to head for the cruise ship. This is what I like to see. I love it. Way to go, Christina. Nice, nice job today. <laughs> The Dow down 161. Um, this is the thing about writing options. The, I keep forgetting to mention this, and I, I'm really proud of this fact that I'm going to throw at you guys. There's 211 of you here, and I don't know what the number is, but the number of women that trade options, that write options, is quite high. Um, I think my channel has one of the highest female ratios of any YouTuber out there in the business sector covering the markets um women just have a knack of being able to write call options they they just have a feel for it uh there's a lot of really good guy option writers too don't get me wrong but the gals there are a whole bunch of women that uh, follow me here some of which some of whom make it known that they are female a number of which here are here we don't know that they're female and I'm really proud of these gals. Uh, they are really changing their lives. They're taking control of their lives. And I think it's fantastic. Christina, she is, and she is still selling. I'm in the USO. All five kids are with my wife, so I can make some money laughing out loud. Adventures with Duncan, Costa Rica inbound tomorrow. Right on. Um, there's some real opportunity here for the gals to change your existence. Uh, so many women out there have one job, two jobs, they're single moms, uh, they're, they're, they're you know, struggling with their, their, their better halves. Um, there's a lot of couples who watch me. A lot of husband and wives watch me and follow this channel, uh, which is also really cool. Um, husbands and wives, you know, one started watching me, then convinced the other one to kind of watch me too. And the next thing you know, the two are collaborating and are figuring out this guy makes sense. Uh, if we write options that have uh, two days left to go, uh, one week left to go, 18 days left to go, they drop in value as their time shrinks away. There's some money in them there, Hills. And if we can do multiple trades a week, a month, a day, whatever, we can really pile up some cash here. And it's really happening. And I'm really so pr proud of so many of you who are doing this, males and females. Um, it's making a difference in your lives. And uh, I, I get the messages all the time off the record. I get these private emails all the time, folks telling me just what it means to them and what's happening. And I'm really proud of you that it's working for you. This market is absolutely tailor-made for option writers. There are so many gamblers out there who are only watching YouTubers that are telling them, you know, you can get rich by buying call options and you gamble, you know, and you take, you go with the leverage and you look for the big, you know, big hit of all time, the lottery win. These are exactly the kind of traders that option writers make money off of. Tons of these guys, and there are millions of them, millions of players of options that are looking for a score. And all, all you need to do is offer your share of contracts, and there's a buyer out there waiting to pounce on them. Take their money, take their money, and give them, give them back less. It's a beautiful thing. Take their money and give them back less. Pickno says, someone needs their own channel. Uh, Duncan, uh, Thumbs, Diamonds, Shades, Christina, and Early in your show, Uncle Bruce, you made it very clear that you won't tolerate any foul talk and sexist comments and perverted sidebar. It set the tone for us ladies to want to stay. And, and this is something that I'm really proud of. I have such a great community here um, that really uh, we, we are, I'm proud of you guys. Uh, we're really a community. 
we are we think positively and we are respectful and i i want it that way i want to keep it that way uh, gaudi my girlfriend watches this channel with me often and she likes your travel channel a lot stocks aren't for her just just not her kind of interest but she enjoys watching and listening with we want with me while i'm working uh, austin sofi 1.2 billion of debt out of about 5 billion on hand is interest free convertible debt not due until 2026 great move in a rising interest rate environment oh yeah they are scoring uh, they've done so well gaudi she's learned a lot from just listening and watching um, uh, uncle bruce we talk about the market often well while well, i do and it surprises me <clears throat> often the stuff she already knows and understands from just listening it, you just observe it yeah uh gaudi what, what what i'm trying to say is these streams are very educational and informative um christina that's a great point thank you everybody so much LL, thumbs ups. Thank you so much for that. We're down 154 on the Dow. Uh, Tesla's up three bucks to 676. Um, SoFi is at 542, up 14 cents. GameStop, 122.24, down six pennies. Just hanging around that break even bar right now. Spire up a dime. Look at that. 126 and a half. Go, Spire, go. 126 now let's go spire get higher get going let's move this thing 482 000. come on apple down 29 centinos uh we need that to go higher for michael to get a right done amc is up a quarter atip is up four and a half cents to 145 um wrap down nine tenths of a penny six stairs down 26 and me holding a gain of a nickel at the moment pfizer down a buck it was up a buck 50 yesterday i think hbq down 99 cents 3178 this is such a bargain i can't believe it such a bargain uh hbq is trading at 5.8 times earnings and i don't care if people think they're going to have a rough year or not this is giveaway prices this is super cheap they're buying back their stock they pay a dividend i, I just i'm a long-term believer uh, we're down 196 on the on the Dow. Pardon me at the moment. And uh, SoFi is at 540. GameStop 121.69 down 61 cents. Uh, here we go. H Gregory, damn tired to time the bottom of this thing. I'm so, so hard to do it. Bama babe, this is uh, this is the first YouTuber I ever started watching. I think I picked a good one. Well, thank you, Bama babe. You're nice. Coyote working, laughing out loud. H. Gregory got it at thirty-two sixty, stealing this stock. I'm certain that uh, that uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, uh, our friend, uh, the Oracle of Omaha, uh, the richest man in the world, uh, he bought four point one billion dollars of uh, HP. I think at thirty-eight to thirty-nine. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I'm I'm liking this stock. A DQ just had to roll my Moderna $140 calls that were expiring today. Rolled up the 155s and I pocketed some more money. Now you're doing it. You're doing it, DQ. A way to go, buddy. Uh, Tiff, looks like I shouldn't wait for an up move on HBQ. Can't they just start buying back at these prices? <laughs> they probably are. I don't know. DQ, Bama Babe gets paid to watch YouTube. Um, yep, Bama Babe makes money watching YouTube, following this channel. Fantastic, everybody. Everybody makes money following this channel if you're an option writer almost all the time. Um, there are days, there are trades that sometimes don't work out, but generally speaking, option writers make money. You just got to learn how to do it. Check out the classes whenever you can at your leisure at stockmarketswithbruce.ca. Thank you for watching those. And those of you who want to have one-on-ones with yours truly to kind of help refine your trading technique or just some general thoughts, let me know. We'll set you up. We'll get you in there. All righty. Options, nomads. We are laughing over here, Uncle Bruce. You got it exactly right. Um, and for the record, my wife is the top trader between the two of us. She is the trader. There you go. <laughs> Coyote, Adventure to Duncan, working, baby. Triple dog dare. Bruce is the only YouTuber on my watch list. Christina, I put in a stink bit to buy my GameStop calls. I sold back for 59 cents. I got 182. <laughs> Baba, babe, uh, DQ, that is the number one goal of all of us here, making money. Coyote, Uncle Bruce, I found a way to turn work into a passionate hobby for me. 
Um, I spent my whole life thinking that was not possible. Uh, DQ, friends don't let friends write naked puts. Stink bits save lives. Don't forget that, kids. Stink bits save lives. Uh, way to go, you guys. Making some money. We're down 165 on the Dow. And the lower the market go, the more money you guys make. It's just unbelievable, but it's true. Uh, Tesla, 676, up 355. SoFi, 541, up 14. GameStop, 121.85, down 45 cents. Those contracts are shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. If they're expiring today, if they expire next Friday, they're shrinking time, time, time is evaporating on them. Uh, Goyote, I second that, Goyote. I love the markets, says H. Gregory. Right on, you guys. Thank you all so much for your, your support of this channel. Being members, you're huge. It's just huge for us. Uh, Jennifer and I, uh, we uh, we uh, survive from memberships. It's really the number one thing. Classes are added, of course. We love that. And donations when you do well. Thank you. But, yes, memberships, absolutely. Uh, fantastic. Coyote, I think the market will slump lower. Three-day weekend. I can't imagine there's a lot of desire to get in now and run things a bit. Austin so far has access to about $10 billion in debt if needed. It has already been proved meaning they're only utilizing 50% of what they have been approved for. Alberto, let's get this moolah, baby. Yes, sir. Here we are. Uh, we are looking at GameStop down 84 right now. The Dow down 178. Uh, we're down 99 now on uh, on GameStop. Uh, now down 121. Uh, we're trading 121.09. And we're uh, we're getting closer to the low of the day. Uh, 120 76 was the low of the day. Uh, we're we're getting closer here to that number. Uh, yes, down 211 on the Dow. We're now decidedly going negative even further. We're on negative on Matterport. Smart rent is off 23. Tesla is only up a penny at 673. 672 now down 56 cents. SoFi up nine, backing off. GameStop 121 even. We're 24 cents away from the low of the day on GameStop. Uh, Austin, sorry, tuned into this debt thing because I keep reading about how they're screwed because of debt levels. Uh, it's not true at all. I agree, Austin. Thanks for hey Gold Bagel. Thanks for a year, Bruce. Thank you very much, uh, Alberto. Um, yes, sir. Says Coyote. We're going for the moolah. Did some articles say that about them? Uh, Goyote, uh, hey there, and nice tankstra. Uh, Goyote, arms are crossed. Uh, Austin, the lion's share of their debt isn't due. The lion's share of their debt isn't due until 2024. After that, it, that's a long time. Testy Donkey, my stink offer is in for GameStop 120. I sold yesterday for 350. I got a stink offer in. Stink bid, waiting. Stink bid, save lives. Tankstra, Goyote, smiling. Uh, Testy Donkey, I got my bid in there, baby. Watching to see if he gets a fill. Uh, one twenty ninety nine. We are uh, twenty three cents away from the low of the day now. On GameStop, seems to be coming in. Uh, yes, uh, we're close. Down two fifteen on the Dow now. Um, Tesla's negative thirty three cents. SoFi still up a dime at five thirty seven. GameStop down ninety seven. Okay. Uh, Austin Agouti, yeah, and. And how they aren't profitable yet. So if I said they wouldn't be profitable for another year, so I don't know what the big surprise is. Uh, yeah, I, I tell you, uh, that has been my, my 2022 transformation, says Coyote. That has been it um, going from <laughs> to the other. <laughs> Gotta love these. Um, uh, let's see, Coyote. Austin, it sounds like a hit piece. You know, just just. People writing hit pieces on them. Uh, so far, 538, up 11, while the Dow's off 195. GameStop, 121.30. Uh, trying to hang in there, but selling keeps coming in. and We'll see. Um, TIFF, uh, HPQ, a $21 February 17, 2023 call is only um, 1140 bucks right now. Or 1140. If someone wants to write poor man cover calls on a side note, can someone lend me 1140 bucks? Because I can get this for 1140. Does somebody have that to lend me? Yes. If you can buy it, um, you buy a $21 call for 1140. Uh, man, that's like 3240 on HPQ. And the stock is uh, 3170. 
that is a free option. And uh, now you write against it, write 33s, 34s, 35s for a few weeks out. Oh, making money on just 1100 bucks. Oh, you can make some good returns. Nice going, you guys. That's how it's done. Um, you write multiple, multiple contracts on that contract. You will make all kinds of money on that contract. Nice going. We're down 203 on the down now. Uh, GameStop is 120 93 again we're coming into that low level austin they have another two billion they could loan out for student loans but biden won't make a freaking decision Coyote spire back up to the mid 120s uh seeing it at 113 just makes no sense in the world to me and uh spire at 125 up nine cents uh, sofi up nine at 536 gamestop 121 20 down 111 the Dow off 205. Uh, there you have it, everybody. There you go. Uh, Austin, another 2.4 billion personal loans uh, as well. Personal loans scare me a little, though. Uh, well, you know, you can also use that for credit card debt and uh, car loans, uh, home refis. I mean, man, they could make money here. It will be interesting if. Uh, if SoFi becomes profitable sooner as rates keep rising, they may become more profitable even faster than previously thought. And then a lot more profitable than people thought they would be. That's the next surprise is that they turn the corner, but then the, the profit growth is faster than people thought it could be. That changes everything. Everything. Gaudi, did someone grab Spire at 113 to 15? Tiff. Austin, most negative so far article on uh, complete BS. Uh, go to I, expert trader that I am, bought the day before at 127. Think that was the bottom. I thought it was the bottom. Go to tip. I have noticed that as well. I try not to be biased, but a lot of the negative articles on SoFi just leave me scratching my head. There you go. We're down 246 now on the Dow. We're going further to the negative. Tesla down 258. SoFi is only up a, a nickel. A, GameStop, 120.60, new low. T T GameStop is at a new low, 120.60. Right now, we're at new low territory of 120.31. We hit that. So we're going lower. 125 on Spire, hanging right in there. Um, what can I say, kids? We are seeing GameStop come in, which means your options are dropping in price, kids. Your options are dropping. 12060 is where we're at right now. <clears throat> down a buck 70. Nothing great, just down a buck 70. But the right direction, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. Um uh F uh, friends is saying go to I grab 21,000 at 115. Coyote, I'm trying to decide to buy my cover call back or let it ride through the holiday weekend is Coyote. Well, just just keep an eye on it. Just see let it let the stock go lower. Let's just let let it happen. See what happens. All kinds of potential. 234 down dip on the Dow now. 234. Um, got any friends? That is huge. Geez, that's a, a nice buy there. 21,000 at 115. 124 on Spire right now, uh, up eight and a half. Um, ATIP 145 up 4.8. And we're up 3.7 cents on ME. Uh, Dow is down 251. And I think that's near or at the low of the day. Um, awful close to it. Yeah, within five points of the low of the day right now on the Dow Jones index. Um, SoFi up a nickel. GameStop 120.45. Uh, the low has been at 120.31 here. We're not bouncing back any time soon at this point. Looks like we might, we might go lower. We'll see. I'm letting my 120s ride into the sunset, says Touchgrass. Letting them ride down, down, down. DQ, I got already three days of shrinkage just sand between now and Tuesday. Austin, if everyone wants, to, uh, wants a boring read, page 42 of their recent 10Q shows how big of a deal it is to get their student loan thing going again. The article is talking about student loans being a big deal. I agree. Nick, I wish I was short on Tesla rather than being long on Tesla. Yeah, I hear you, buddy. 669 down 372 on that Tesla. So far, 532 to up a nickel. GameStop now, 120.46, uh, 120.55. The Dow down 270 points. 
uh, at the moment. We've got all kinds of activity going on on this market. Fun, fun, fun on a Friday afternoon. Let's see what happens. Uh, my, oh, my. Casino stocks rise after Atlantic City workers decide not to strike on the July 4th weekend. Good news there. Um, and uh, Tankstra says, Gaudi, I was one day early. I grabbed more Spire at 127. It's now 124 and a half. So up eight and a half right at the moment. GameStop, 120.50 down a buck 80 today. The Dow off 242 right now. Okay, 120.19, a new low. We just hit a new low on GameStop. Just boom, 120.16, 120.06, another new low has been hit on GameStop. 120.06, another new low of the day. Contracts continue to drop. The 120s are about to go out of the money. Amazing. Um, Franz Coyote, so freaking hard to time the bottom of this market. I'm long term inspire for at least two years. I'm in there, baby. 532 up five on Spire, 20, 12016 on GameStop down 214. The low of the day, 12006 at the moment. We're down 256 on the Dow Jones. Tesla 669 down uh, 670 now down 333. 116 on GameStop. Um Uncle Bruce, if someone deposits 100 to SoFi Bank, do you know how much of that they can lend out? Um, I'm not sure of the ratio. I think in Canada, it might be seven to one in Canada. I'm not sure what the deal is in the States. Um, the other thing you have to understand is that if SoFi needs cash, they can go to the discount window and borrow cash. Um, so SoFi you know is just leveraging up their business here um and will continue to do so if tesla needed a uh, tesla if sofi needed another 10 billion dollars because of all the demands of credit they could get it for for very little money they really can get their hands on a lot of liquidity anyway we'll see what happens um Goody, tank stress me too uh, same price same date for me laughing out loud um, we are now down 260 on the Dow Jones. Uh, GameStop 12013. We're coming into this low range again of 12006. We're so close. We might break through 120 anytime. We'll see how much support has GameStop got at 120 is the question. Will it hold the 120 bit as stock is coming in? 120, 13, 16, 24, somewhere in there. We're getting some. Uh, we're getting something here. What? Well, here's a question. Will it break 120 here? That is the question. We're so close to breaking 120 on GameStop volume today. 417,000. Not good. That means we can't hold 120. There's no way we can hold 120 with that kind of volume. Might take a while, but we could go through this. The Dow off 266. Uh, yep, one hour in light volume. Uh, touch grass, get out of here. 120. Oh man, yep, 120. Uh, Splair, I think I'm out. Uh, I'm out today earlier. Have a relaxed day, you all. Uh, take care, buddy. Nick, come on, Elon, tweet something positive on Tesla. Anything, come on, baby, help me. 668 down $4.70 on Tesla. GameStop 12016 to 12028 right now seems to be the range. <clears throat> And Aspire's up 7.3 cents to 123.3. The Dow off 270 right now. Matterport off a dime. Smart down 24. 30 up. That's all. Coyote, Splayer, have a good weekend, man. Take care, buddy. 272 drop. 272 drop on the Dow, okay? Folks, I'm going to pack it in. Uh, I'm going to take some time off and come back this afternoon three o'clock eastern for the final hour of trading today you guys keep uh, your hands uh, on the uh, on your buttons ready to make your trades keep your eyes on this market the uh, the uh, games right now gamestop 20 on the button now 120 uh they're hitting that bid broke it 119.79 gamestop is under 120 officially now there you go. Uh, down we are. See, Gaioni, there you are. It did it. Uh, see you all this afternoon. Stay vigilant, says Gaioni. 
Keep your eyes on this. Uh, your calls will back off, no question about it. Those 130s, 125s, 24s, 23s, 22s, 20s, even the 15s and the 110s, they will back up and uh, keep your eye on opportunities. Um, thank you, everybody, for being with me so far today. And thank you for all these thumbs ups. We got 189 thumbs ups in here. I don't know if there's 11 thumbs ups available towards the end of this broadcast. Does anybody know if anyone out there with thumbs ups possibilities? Can we get 11 thumbs ups before I sign off? I don't know. 11974 on your GameStop. Not bad. Um, 271 loss on the Dow. We got 191 on the thumbs up meter. I only need nine more to get to 200, everybody. Help a poor man out. Help a homeless Canadian get to 200 thumbs ups. I would appreciate it. Hopefully, Uncle Bruce is not leaving because of my message now, says Flair. Uh, uh, 110's coming for Christina. Friends, don't let friends kiss mustached women later, everybody. Um, I wish I had another thumb to give, says Coyote. Thank you, everybody, so much. Uh, we're at 198. Only two thumbs ups needed to get to 200. We're just about there. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate this so much. Uh, 199. Oh, yeah, baby. One away from the coveted 200 plateau. You guys are awesome. Thank you for helping out. Uh, Gonzo Cruiser says, I gave number 1984. There it is. 200 are here. DQ, I was just 199. And uh, and then on a third attempt, a third account, Austin, uh, well, I was having a good morning. <laughs> Someone donated a thumb to Uncle Bruce. Uh, they're here. They have come through again. 202 thumbs ups are here for this show. You guys are awesome. I thank you so very much. 187 people here. 202 thumbs ups. You got to love it. Uh, 258, the down dip on the Dow. Um Tesla's down four bucks to six sixty nine. So why up a penny five twenty eight? Hanging in there. GameStop one nineteen eighty two. It looks like the low of the day is one nineteen twenty nine today, and we might go even lower. We'll watch for that. I'll see you at three this afternoon, you guys. I appreciate all this. Uh, and Austin, I'm your friend. I won't let you do it. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. See you at 3 uh, Eastern time for the final hour on this option expiry Friday, okay? We'll talk to you real soon. Thanks so much. Bye for now.